Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and for this new week. As we gather together to worship you, to praise you, we pray that you may accept our praises and our thanksgiving. And be with us throughout this service and bless all those who participate in this service all over the world. We pray that you may speak to them and help them to understand your word and accept your word and abide by your word. Be with us throughout this week. Bless all our efforts and endeavors. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us all praise God by singing the hymn 108. Jesus, the very thought of thee. Let us all sing together hymn 99. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. <laughs> Let us pray. Page number 43, the first order of worship. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
You have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. O God, our Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, we beseech you. Cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and Merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us listen to the first lesson. The first lesson for today is taken from the book of First Kings, chapter 18, verses 36 to 39. First Kings, chapter 18, reading at verse 36. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Here ended the lesson. Praise be to you, O God. The second lesson will be read to us. The second lesson is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses from 14 to 21. Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generation for ever and ever. Amen. Here ends the uh, second lesson. Thanks be to God. Now we shall have the responsive reading. The responsive reading is taken from Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear my tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I will go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night 
His song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? Let's say together, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Glory be to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now let us all sing together the hymn 533. Prayer is a soul's sincere desire. Hymn number 533. Let us pray.
let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, the Redeemer. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. This is the second Sunday in September. The topic chosen for this Sunday is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. With pandemic around, our only hope is God. Many people pray all over the world. Many churches pray in groups and in fellowships. God alone can remove this deadly virus from the face of the earth. And it is our bounden duty to spend more time with God. Prayer is the means through which we communicate with God. Prayer is undoubtedly one of the oldest and most constant phenomena in the history of religion and culture. Prayer has become less intelligible and even less believable to many people today. How would you define a prayer? The dictionary defines prayer as a reverent petition made to God. It is an act of communion with God. Let us therefore analyze the meaning of prayer, the necessity of prayer, and the power of prayer in the context of Jewish prayer in the time of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer, and the parable we find in St. Luke chapter 18, verses from 9 to 14. Let us look at the modes of prayer. What is prayer according to the Bible? Prayer is the response and vital side of faith. Believers pray and those who pray believe. After the transfiguration, Jesus and three of his disciples, Peter, James and John, climbed down the hill and they saw a huge crowd surrounding the other disciples. Let us turn to St. Mark chapter 9. The the verses from 14 to 29. Father of a mute boy with an unclean spirit. He asked the disciples to cure him, but they could not. Jesus asked him what happened. Then he explained everything to him. At that time, Jesus said, in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. This classical New Testament confession of faith is a prayer. It shows the place of prayer. Its context is our need before God. Its context is our necessity before God. Then look at the first lesson, Genesis chapter 32, particularly verse 26. Look at Jacob's wrestling with God at the Jabbok. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Those who wrestle and pray 
biblically do not rely on their own virtues or piety but on the promise that is given them in this sense biblical prayer is more than verbal prayer apostle paul speaks about praying without ceasing first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 clearly we have here a whole dimension of human existence before god pray as this inner dimension embraces and accompanies the whole polyphony of human life the whole harmony of human life polyphony is a musical term the whole chords everything together the harmony of human life let us see the comprehensive and and many faceted nature of prayer according to 1st Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 1st Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 apostle paul says here first of all i urge that petitions prayers intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people for kings and all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life godly and dignified in every way petitions intercession and thanksgiving these three things we find here petition or supplication in the new testament the range of petitionary prayer is very broad it deals with small things and great things life in all its diversity is brought before god in petition then intercession in prayer human need is not isolated the personal and the social go together hand in hand in christian community we pray for one another but we also pray for the whole world in our prayers especially on friday evening we not only pray for our church for our members our families we pray for our state our country and for the whole world we have to be sensitive we have to care for the people and that is the responsibility of the christian church and that is the responsibility of every christian intercession is a sign of concerned participation in the life and well-being of others the church has to take care of the society the church has to take care of the poor the sick the orphans the widows and it is our responsibility to intercede with god the third one is thanksgiving and praise the first thing and final thing in prayer is praise of god we begin with praise and we close with praise even in our worship services we begin with a praise song of praise when we begin a service and when we close the service we sing a song of praise again thanking god for life for good health and for good strength in these three forms we have an outline of the basic structure of prayer from a biblical and theological standpoint now let us look at jewish prayers in the time of jesus we find three aspects here the first one dependence on god and need for god jews frequently expressed their need for god second one need for acceptance forgiveness 
and justification. The need for God was expressed above all as Jews depended solely on God for acceptance, for forgiveness and for justification. This is the dominant element in early Jewish prayer. Jews readily admitted they were sinful and incapable of fulfilling the Torah, God's will or God's word. A devout Jew who composed the prayer of Manasseh prays like this, and now behold I am bending the knees of my heart before you. And now behold, I am bending the knees of my heart before you. And I am beseeching your kindness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned. And I certainly know my sins. I beseech you, forgive me, O Lord, forgive me. What a beautiful prayer. I am bending the knees of my heart before you. The third one, need to converse with God and to do so spontaneously, not out of compulsion. Sometimes this conversation was through silence and in meditation. The Jews believed that God could hear the voice of the heart. The early Jews knew how difficult it is to put into words an appropriate and representative prayer. Before God, one becomes speechless. A very good example we find in the prayer of Hannah, Elkanah's wife, Samuel's mother. She went to the synagogue and she prayed for a child, for a son, and she said she will offer that son to God for his ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Her lips were moving, but the words did not come out. She was speaking in her heart. God hears the voice of the heart. For Jews, prayer was not an accessory, an extra fitting. It was the very fabric of existence. The day was ordered according to the times of prayer. The year was ordered by prayers. That was the gist of the Jewish prayer in the time of Jesus. Now coming to the Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer is a model for personal and spontaneous prayer. It is called the Prayer of Prayers. Prayer of Prayers. Like other personal prayers, it is brief, couched in a simple style. The Lord's Prayer proclaims God's presence in everyday life. At the end of each service, at the end of each prayer meeting, at the end of each prayer fellowship, we say the Lord's Prayer. We conclude our prayer fellowship our family prayers by using the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer insists that when we pray, not only as an individual, but also as a Christian community, we touch God and God's power to create and recreate. Prayer changes the world. First of all, prayer changes us. Prayer changes me. Prayer changes you. 
prayer changes the whole world and it makes it possible for god to act through us to transform the world we become the agents of god we become the ambassadors of christ and through us god wants to transform the whole world through our prayer god wants to transform the whole world because our prayer touches god our prayer touches god's power our prayer should be like that the lord's prayer binds us together and knits us one to another now we recall the parable of the pharisee and the publican let us turn to st luke chapter 18 verses from 9 to 14 two men visiting the same synagogue both praying to the same god but they offer two different prayers with surprising results two men go to the same synagogue pray to the same god but they have different prayers but the result is not the same it is different it is not surprising the two people go to the synagogue to pray it is a common sight two people go together three go together families go together groups go together to pray to god to the synagogue what is surprising and shocking is the presence of the publican or tax collector the pharisee was a sanctimonious person a hypocritical person feels morally superior about pharisees jesus said they are white washed tombs whited sepulcher white washed tombs it's in matthew chapter 23 verse 27 the tax collector was virtually impure through his contact with the gentiles the prayer of the pharisee has become a caricature of boasting and exalting oneself before god let us look at the prayer of the pharisee he boasts of his piety he boasts of his observance of the law i fast twice in a week and i tithe verbs in the first person nominative i thank i am not i fast i tithe and i get he used bombastic words he used bombastic language to impress god and the posture of the pharisee look at the posture of the pharisee he stood up to pray even today the jews stand and pray if you go to the wailing wall you'll see the jews with a skull cap standing before the wailing wall dashing the head against the wailing wall reading torah and waiting for god to come again it's a common sight they stand and pray now look at the prayer of the publican the tax collector he is conscious of his sinfulness he hopes that he will be given god's mercy his posture he did not lift up his eyes to heaven finally he beats his chest he beats his breast it's a sign of compunction and contrition the psalm is says in psalm 51 verse 7 
Lord, you will not reject the broken hearted. Broken heart and a contrite spirit thou will not despise. Here is bodily gestures or themselves a prayer. So the words are simple. He did not use many words. There is no verbosity here. His hope is in God's grace. At the end of the parable we see two things. Penalty and reward. Penalty. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. That is the penalty. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. That is the award. That is the reward. So, the publican received that reward. He humbled himself before God and he was exalted before the Pharisee. So, what do we see and what do we learn from this prayer of the Pharisee and the publican? Prayer is not information. Prayer is not comparison. Prayer is not accusation. Prayer is submission to the mercy of God. One theologian says, the great tragedy of life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. The great tragedy of life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. Prayer is for the most part an untapped resource, an unexplored continent where untold treasure remains to be unearthed. Many people speak about prayer. Many people want to pray. Prayer is talked about more than anything else and practiced less than anything else. There is a certain philosophy in prayer. God is to be honored and God is to be acknowledged. That philosophy we find in prayer. God is to be honored and God is to be acknowledged. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ and all those who participate in this service and watch the service all over the world, what is our position? What is your position? Are you touching God through your prayer? Are you able to touch God and God's power through your prayer? Has prayer changed your life? Is God able to Transform the world through your prayer. If not, it is high time that we realized our inability to communicate with God. We have to converse with God. God hears the voice of our heart. God listens to us. Prophet Isaiah says, God's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, and ears heavy that it cannot hear. God wants to hear our voice, our petitions, our supplications. God wants to save us. We have to touch God and God's power through our prayer. Let us examine our lives and submit our lives to God. Lord, forgive us. Like the prayer of Manasseh, I want to bend the knees of my heart before you. I know my sin. My sin is ever before me. Forgive me. Use me as your instrument. 
to transform the world and make this world a better world for everyone to live and enjoy the presence of God. Through us, God wants to create a new heaven and a new earth. He has promised and he is going to do that. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for teaching us how to pray. We thank you for your Son, for the prayer that he has taught us. Enable us to pray with all our heart, mind, soul and body and strength so that we can touch your power and you can transform us, you can change us and through us you can transform the whole world. We submit our lives to you and we are waiting for your blessing. Give us the opportunity to come together as one family without any restriction, without any curb, so that we can worship together as one family under one roof. And we thank you for bringing us thus far and be with us throughout this week and this month. Bless all our efforts and endeavors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us profess our faith to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we shall have the announcements. I once again greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Birthday and wedding anniversary wishes to all those members who celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversary this week, both Egmore Wesley Church and Broadway English Wesley Church. May God give them good health, strength and long life and help them celebrate many more birthdays and wedding anniversaries.
Let us pray for our children who write neat exam today. May God enable them to get into professional colleges. Sunday school and junior youth fellowship online classes are going on every Sunday immediately after the service. The link is sent to all the members. Please encourage your children to attend. Mr. Augustin Daniel, retired additional superintendent of police, aged 71 years, entered into glory last Sunday, the 6th of September, 2020. Please uphold the buried family in your prayers. Friends, it is decided to continue with online service till the end of September 2020. We will take a review by the end of this month to see the possibility of reopening the church for regular service. Till the 27th of September, we will have online Sunday worship service. As announced last Sunday, The diocese has instructed all pastors to make announcement regarding payment of subscription. Those who could not pay subscription for the financial year from April 2019 to March 2020 are requested to update their subscription by paying the same on or before 20th of September 2020. You can pay through net banking or you can pay in the church office. Church office is open from Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for bringing us together to offer our praises unto you. As we pray from different homes, in our respective homes, we pray that you may answer our prayers. We thank you, O Lord, for the life you have given us. We thank you for the gift of life. We're at this time, we especially pray for our members who will be celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. Bless each and every one of them. Give them good health, strength and long life. Fulfill all your plans and purposes in and through their life. Fulfill all their wishes and desires. Use them for your glory in the church, at home and in the society. We pray for our children who are writing neat exam today in different centers. We pray that you may give them memory power and wisdom to write the exams well and come out with flying colors and help them to enter into professional colleges and universities so that they can continue their studies without any break. At this time, we also very specially pray and thank you for the life and witness of Mr. Augustine Daniel. We thank you for his service rendered to the society through police department. We pray and commit his wife and children and grandchildren in your hands, O Lord. Give them the comfort and the consolation the world cannot give. We also very specially pray and thank you for the Pulikuntam Church construction work. Last week, we have done the roof concreting. Oh Lord, we thank you for bringing us thus far and we thank you for the members who contribute generously and liberally towards this noble project. And we commit the engineer, the contractor and all the workers, laborers in your hands, oh Lord, They are building the house of God. We are building the house of God for the people at Pulikundram. Help us to complete this project on time so that we can hand over the church to the local congregation with your blessing and dedication.
we also very specially pray for our country our state and for the whole world protect us from this deadly virus covid-19 we pray for the doctors nurses other healthcare workers who work hard day and night who take care of the covid patients pray that you may protect them and give them wisdom and presence of mind to give the right treatment we also pray for the scientists and others who try to develop a vaccine for this deadly virus help them to succeed in creating a vaccine so that through that we can control and contain this corona virus be with us throughout this month o lord bless all our efforts and endeavors and we commit the members and very especially the elders and children of our church both the churches in your hands protect them under the holy wings o lord and we pray for our members who are not keeping well some are down with viral fever some are down with covid-19 we commit them in your hands we pray that you may put your healing touch upon them help them to recover very specially pray for dr vincent's father who is in hospital we thank you for his mother and son cyrus we pray that you may continue to put your healing touch upon them we pray for other members who are under home quarantine and some are in hospitals we very specially pray for them help them to recover soon so that they will glorify your name and continue to serve you faithfully in the church at home in the society once again we thank you o lord for this time of fellowship and help us to come together to worship you under one roof without any restriction or any curb i'm uh, looking forward to that glorious culmination and fellowship accept our praises and our thanksgiving through jesus christ our lord we pray amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen may the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forever more Now let us all sing together the hymn 259 and art thou come with us to dwell hymn number 259 
the lord be with you go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen may god bless all of us